What gifts of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is holy. Strange and divine, I can sing all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side. He will stay I labor on In weakness and rejoicing For in my need His power is displayed To this I hold My shepherd will defend me Through the deepest valley He will lead Oh, the night
Hi everyone. Have you noticed in your own kind of spirit as we've kind of begun to move out of the pandemic and kind of move back into normal life, have you felt things just kind of speeding up almost more than they were pre-pandemic or at least that's how we feel? Whether it is the uh, the pressures for work are ramping up, maybe it's kids' um, activities are hitting full stride again. Whatever it is, it's it's one of those things where it feels like we're going 100 miles per hour, rushing here, rushing there. And I think that's part of our society. And I think it is all kind of building a little bit too. I mean, I was listening um, to the news how prices, as you probably have noticed, <laughs> Are going up on everything and I, I'm wondering if that adds to our stress or even our anxiety a little bit and I say that because I think there is this thing that we need to to maybe learn from the pandemic if we experienced it and I'll talk about what that I mean by that in a second but also then to understand that there is always this chance and always this need to kind of unplug from the treadmill that is your life, that is my life. And I think that's an important piece for us. I was thinking about um, Jesus's day with his disciples. He had sent out his disciples um, to go and minister in his name and they've come back. And it's the verses right before the feeding of the 5,000 in Mark. And, um, and he says, oh, where'd I go? There it is says, um, the, apostle, the apostles gathered around Jesus and told them all that they had done and taught. And Jesus said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. And it says, for many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And I think that's kind of how our lives are. Now, we're not doing ministry like they are, but perhaps we are in some cases, but our lives are just hectic. And so I think we, we rush around from one thing to the next. And many times our thoughts, um, we express our thoughts, we express our emotions almost on the fly without even really taking time to let them sink in and say, is there something behind what I'm feeling or what I'm saying just as I continue to move through my day? I think we need those times where we need to get away and need to be in an unhurried pace. I will tell you, that's one of the things that I like about being on my porch here, is it's one of those few places where it's a place for me to just kind of be my, if you will, deserted place or my quiet place where I can take a little time to think and to reflect a little bit. And I'm wondering if for you, during the pandemic, because there wasn't a lot of things to do, you couldn't go anywhere, you didn't necessarily go to work, or work was very different than maybe it is now, that there was this sense of, I have this chance to kind of recapture or recalibrate a little bit of myself because I have to stay home. I think many people in the pandemic kind of began to kind of see the beauty and the, the if you will, health benefits of unplugging from our treadmills. And yet, as soon as the, tre as soon as the pandemic was over, it's full speed ahead. We're back on the treadmill running as fast as we can. So I want to ask you and encourage you to think about what does it mean to unplug, to come away to a deserted place, preferably with Jesus. It's that kind of place where you can, you can express your prayers to Jesus. Maybe that you'd say, well, I would never tell anybody at church that. But in that place, it's a safe place. It's a safe place to be able to fully express yourself to your Lord. I invite you to think about what does it look like to find those little respites, particularly as the world is 
again spinning up to speed and in some ways maybe feels even faster than it was before the pandemic. To take that time, to take that time to find that place to get away with Jesus. It doesn't have to be in the wilderness. It can be a chair by the window or some place that allows you just to decompress, to think, to pray. We need those times. We need those times to think through all the things that are happening in our lives. And I want you to know that Jesus meets you, meets you in those times, in those thoughts and in those prayers. He's with you. And ask him, invite him into that place as well. As you do that, I think you will find perhaps a more centered, quiet self in the midst of an ever-increasing world that we live in. That is what Jesus brings us when he says, I give you peace, peace not as the world knows. I think that's one of the ways we experience that peace. So I invite you to embrace that. Let me pray. Lord, thank you that you are a God who knows us so well that you are gr we are grateful for all that you do. Lord, help us to find those deserted places in our lives where we can be with our thoughts and with you. I ask that, Lord, in your name. Tomorrow is the Raspberry Festival um, kind of celebration on Main Street. And Faith Church is going to have a booth down at the east end of Main Street, down by Chipotle and Cold Stone. And so we invite you to stop by. Joa will be there. There'll be some of us who will stop by through the day. And uh, I've even heard that uh, Cinderella and Prince Charming are going to make a, an appearance in the afternoon there to have pictures taken with the kiddos. So um, wanted to let you know about that. And maybe if you have kids or grandkids, that's a great opportunity for you to be able to do that. Also, I want to continue to encourage us to do a couple things for our pastoral succession. The first one is what invite you to turn in some prayers from Scripture, some encouragement, some promises from Scripture that we can build into a prayer sheet for all of us to be praying for our pastor nominating committee. Take those Scripture references and, and email them to prayer team at faithchurchmn.org. That's one of the things you can do. The other thing is, if you have questions about the whole process or you're not sure about something, the transition team is also trying to build a list of questions you may be asking. So if you have a question, send it to them. Theirs is transition team at faithchurchmn.org. We're trying to help all of us move through this place of transitions from one pastor to the next. And we want to be there to help you as we all move through this process together. I hope you have a good weekend. God bless everybody. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye now.